Hello from Farland. So it's really cool, you know, we've got the Fowler Road going and everything. But I've come to the conclusion that it's a little boring just watching it go around and round and round. Nobody would drive endlessly with ever stop, without ever stopping, particularly a delivery truck. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's probably possible to have it stop wherever I want it to. And I've come up with a theory which I hope to prove in this video. So let's go uh, let's go take a look at what I'm thinking. We'll use the harbor as a shelf today. Eventually I'm not going to be able to do that. It makes a handy shelf. In this box, I have what I need to make a remote stop, an automatic stop for the little Fowler vehicle. Oops. Didn't mean to dump that out. I've already taken it and opened that. It's a horizontal mounting kit for a tortoise motor. And I think, particularly after seeing what they're doing at the Colorado Model Railroad Museum with their Fowler system, Edward Sargent, Ed Sargent, invited me up there to see. Uh, they have a pretty extensive, extensive Fowler system. It's up in Greeley, Colorado. They have an extensive Fowler road up there, two roads, in fact, with stops and a number of features that I, I found very, very interesting. So, this is a double pole, double throw relay that I can use to uh, operate the actual tortoise motor. And this is a uh, sensor, very similar to what I use to control uh, my signals, or some of my signals. And of course the tortoise motor. Armed with this, I think I can make the truck, or any vehicle for that matter, that is uh, coming down the Fowler Road, I think I can make it stop and then continue on after a period of time. In the case of the DHL truck, it would look like it was stopped, making a delivery or a pickup, and then heading on. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm going to work on today. These Fowler vehicles come equipped with a micro switch that can be activated with a magnet. So, if it's running, and a magnet comes up, it stops. And the magnet comes down, starts up. I think I have it rigged up now. Now I'm not going to leave it like this. This will all be tucked away underneath and you won't see it. But what I've got here is, let me put it up here. Up here, we have 
an infrared receiver and sender. And they're looking to each other. And if you block the beam, if you block the beam, those sensors are attached to this circuit here. That triggers that circuit. And it closes a relay right here. And it starts timing. And it times for around 15 seconds. That's the way I have it set right now. And when it is timing, it closes a circuit to the coil on this relay. And this relay is a double pole, double throw relay. Inside, it's a switch like this. Double pole, double throw. But instead of manually switching it with a toggle, this one works electrically with a coil. It's a relay. So you energize the coil and it changes those contacts just like you would here. And by doing that with a double pole double throw, if it's wired right, it will change the polarity coming from it. And that changed polarity goes to this tortoise motor, which will be mounted up underneath the layout. And this arm will be right in the path underneath the wire of the Fowler truck. So when the Fowler truck breaks the beam, the magnet rises up enough under the table to stop the truck. What all this is leading up to is that I need to know how long after the truck passes the sensors does it take before this is fully extended. And once I know that value, then it's a matter of converting that to distance run by the truck so that I'll know where to put the sensors and how far away, you know, down the road that I need to put this because this will have a magnet on it. Okay, so uh, I guess first we'll watch the truck go by and um, we can just listen. Everything worked perfectly. I'm not sure that this is ex the exact place that I'm going to deploy this. If I zoom out, you won't be able to see much. So this time, let's watch. This gear down here. Okay, Fowler vehicle is running. Starts timing. Time's out. But the question is, of course, how long does that take? I'm going to start the stopwatch when the back of the Fowler truck passes the beam. Okay, it takes three seconds. So how far can this thing go in three seconds? 
So I have uh, I have this taper paper tape measure, and I have it uh, taped up here. It's upside down, but that's because it goes backwards. The Fowler truck goes this way, and the tape measure wants to go that way, but. Anyway, I flipped it over and it's upside down, but it'll still still start from one here and goes to 36 over there. I think that's enough distance. So the next thing we have to do is run the Fowler truck and time three seconds and try to figure out where it is. To do that, I think it's easiest probably to do it with the camera. Have the stopwatch going. And on the camera, see where it stops when it passes three seconds. Well, let's do it this way because I'm not sure that I can do all these things at the same time. I'm going to start the Fowler truck and let it run around so that we have uh, multiple tries at this. I'm going to start it up over here on the other side. Okay, so in the neighborhood of 25 inches. So, to sum up, the, the system works, the magnet stops the truck, we know how far it takes, probably be safe, probably put it out at 27 or 28 inches from the sensor which, you know, it would if it was down there, then it would stop down here. So next week we'll have a stop. Well, hopefully, we'll have a stop on the Fowler Road. And the truck will stop, wait, and then take off again. Now, I've come up with some other ideas that I could do. You know, we have the jog in the Fowler Road right here. I could put a police car sitting there and have a magnet under it. And when the car goes by, the police car takes off after it. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you could do once you can stop everything. Now, Fowler has all kinds of fancy digital this and that for it, and I may get into that after a while, but for right now, I'm keeping it simple, doing stuff that I think is fun, not too expensive, and uh, easy to demonstrate. Next week, we'll have a stop someplace. Bye from Farland.